a catch pool. No, no it's a catch pool. Wait, you just put your hand in there. Well, you can touch the sea anemone, the green thing. Do it. Okay. Yeah. No. They're not going to touch. I'm just kidding. You rolled this sleeve up, that's you. What do I got? The green thing. Put your fingers on it. Okay. Yeah. And then the It's fun. Yeah, it'll be none. Oh, it's like blue. <laughs> should I? I want to wear I think you should. Okay. Oh. That actually feels so weird. Yeah, it actually like sticks to your feet. Yeah. It's like grabbing me. You're not touching a fish, bro. That is basically a fish. How is it a fish? It's alive. They eat a lot of food. Uh, these animals actually eat around uh, a quarter of their body weight every day. So if you weigh around 100 pounds, that'd be like eating 100 quarter pound cheeseburgers. Um, some ice treats. So uh, it's pretty much just um, frozen blocks uh, with a little bit of food in it. Um, <laughs> Don't hit them, Scott. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> they actually seem like very, almost like, I don't know if you can say like human, but... So, sea are actually one of a uh, very select few amount of mammals that actually have the ability to use tools. Um, and they, I think, are one of only a handful outside of primates that know uh, the usage of tools. This guy up front is Joey. He is one of our more famous otters. He's a bit famous for the noises he makes. Um, a lot of people uh, were very interactive and were following the story of uh, Joey uh, very closely uh, over the uh, COVID pandemic. Fur is only connected at their neck, wrists, and ankles, um, which allows them to pretty much manipulate uh, their fur on any other part of their body. Uh, they can bring it over to the front if they have to. called Wildlife Rescues, Miracles and Conservation. And we all know that wildlife populations are under enormous stress. Many reasons are human caused, such as pollution, deforestation. And a lot of species are endangered and on the brink of extinction. So this exhibit highlights different conservation success stories from around the world and encourages our visitors to learn about what zoos and aquariums are doing to help different animals. Okay, so this is Linky. She is just a, a domestic ferret. Yeah, so if you guys want to come and give her a pet, you are welcome to put her on her back here. So I'm sure you guys have heard of or seen ferrets being kept as pets. Yeah. Uh, that has been done for thousands of years. Uh, they are considered a separate species uh, because they were brought in and raised by humans and taken care of by humans for such a long time. Originally, they would actually be used to help with rabbit hunts. This is uh, Mel. Mel? Oh, yeah, Hawk Alan Boa. Yeah, do you want a pen? Oh, not really. You can try. It's kind of smooth, actually. Yeah. It's not that rough. Yeah, can you give it a try? Wow, what? you're so silky smooth, my guy. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so their baby now is around when you're old. Yeah. This exhibit is brand new. It opened on Saturday and it will be here all the way through the summer until September 25th. Max, do you like sex? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. I've never touched a snake before, but I don't mind touching them. Oh. That's a big snake. What are your thoughts about wearing it like a scarf? I just won't be doing that, no will I? I'm done. I'm just I good. Would. You will? I will. Me too. I will if you will. 
I mean, I, I'll do it. Look at that movie, bro. Look at Boyd. What are you supposed to do? I don't know. That turtle is just swimming around. Yeah. Exploring the landscape. Oh, we have 12 different species in this exhibit. One of my favorites are the Burmese star tortoises, which are right behind me here. But we also have ferrets, different kinds of snakes and amphibians. We have a, a possum, which is really amazing to see. Um, so I invite everybody to come on down and take a look for themselves.